All right, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to extend our appreciation to you all who are listening to this presentation for the I-40 New Mexico 118 interchange study. My name is Gabriel Sanchez Ramos, and I am the project development engineer with the New Mexico Department of Transportation. This presentation will provide you with information about what improvements are needed at the inter interchange and our preliminary solutions to correct the issues. We appreciate your attendance and look forward to your input after the presentation. The New Mexico Department of Transportation has procured the services of HDR Engineering to assist in the development of this study. And I would like to turn it over to their project manager, Dantin Bean, to continue the presentation. Dantin? Thank you, Gabriel. Again, yet yeah, uh, I'd like to repeat that, that we're I'm grateful for everybody to be part of this and, and look forward to your comments and, and questions. Uh, the, the agenda for today's meeting is as follows. We will introduce our team. We will pre present the study location and area. We will present the uh, existing conditions and we'll talk about the needs that we've identified at this point in the study. And we'll present some possible alternatives. And, and then we'll look forward to the next steps. And we'll close with a question and, and discussion uh, session. So the project team is made up of members uh, from the DOT in cooperation with FHWA, in addition, the HDR team. We are grateful for everybody's participation and effort uh, on, in the study. The study area is located in the northwest quadrant of the state and is approximately 8.4 miles from the Arizona state line on I-40. That is approximately 12 miles west of Gallup. The study area consists of the interchange of I-40 and New Mexico 118, and all the ramps of that interchange between milepost eight and nine on I-40 and New Mexico 118. The adjacent bridges, bridges number 6281, 60, uh, 6282, and 3488 are not part of the study area. You may be aware of uh, I-40 corridor study by the New Mexico Department of, Tr of Transportation that is currently underway. This study falls within the limits of that corridor study. And the recommendations from that study will be incorporated into this study. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the development of a study and projects. And the, the DOT organizes that into phases. phases a, phase A and B are the study phase. Phase C is the environmental documentation. And phase D is the development of, of the preliminary design. We're in the middle of the study phase and we're gathering data uh, on the existing conditions to help identify the needs in the area. The team then developed a number of potential improvements, uh, alternatives that uh, will be evaluated. So the purpose of the meeting today is to present our findings and the possible solutions and seek your input. So let's get into the discussion, our findings on the existing conditions within the study area. And we'll start with the, the bridge discipline. The existing grade separation structure is a concrete box that was constructed in 1963. It's a single barrel concrete box that's 26 feet wide by 13 and a half feet high. The box structure does not meet standards, current standards for vertical and, and horizontal uh, clearance. The top of the box uh, shows signs of impact indicating that it isn't tall enough. The condition of the box is poor with cracking and water staining. So now I'll turn the time over to Robbie to uh, help us uh, with the discussion on the roadway discipline. Thank you, Tanton. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm the roadway engineer uh, for this project. I'll provide a quick um, description of existing roadway conditions um, and the geometry for I-40 mainline 
on ramps for New Mexico 118 uh, within these project limits. New Mexico 118 has very sharp curves, um, limiting the site distance at the location um, shown by number one in the picture. The exit ramps do not have sufficient length um, to safely exit from I-40 main line before coming to a stop at the stop sign with New Mexico 118. This is shown by number two in the picture. Existing entrance ramps are not long enough to provide sufficient acceleration distance to safely merge onto I-40 main line. This is shown by number three on the picture. Existing traffic interchange is also not modern and does not meet driver's expectations, as you can see by number four uh, in the picture on the slide. Next slide, please. The picture on the slide represents I-40 main lines looking west. And as you can see, I-40 has two lanes in each direction with the four foot inside shoulder and 10 foot outside shoulder. The posted speed uh, for I-40 main line is 75 miles per hour. This is a picture of New Mexico 118 looking north. And as you can see, New Mexico 118 has one lane in each direction with a posted speed of 30 miles per hour. The shoulders are minimal or non-existent. Existing cars do not have sufficient sight distance. The picture also shows an issue in the study area of sediment transportation, or in other words, the dirt from the slopes washing into the roadway. It is a continue, continuation of the main, maintenance issue. And also high dirt slopes can also be unsafe for motorists if, as it obstructs the view of the more, um, passengers entering into the box structure. As stated previously, um, exit ramps do not have sufficient deceleration length to come to a stop condition uh, from 75 miles per hour mainline speed. Standards require a deceleration length of 705 feet, but the eastbound westbound ramps have approximately 183 feet and 240 feet respectively. Slide please. Similarly, the entrance ramps entering the new I-40 from New Mexico 118 are not long enough for drivers to safely merge onto traffic speeds for I-17 main line, I-40 main line. It is also difficult to yield and look, look over the shoulder to see oncoming drivers who may, might be in the right lane. In summary, um, side distance is limited through bridge number 6502 on New Mexico 118, um, on I-40 exit ramps, and also on the I-40 entrance ramps. Ramps have defic deficient acceleration lane lengths. Also, the existing traffic interchange is not modern and does not meet driver's expectations. In other words, the interchange configuration is not very common and new drivers to the interchange don't expect the layout. I'll hand things back to Denton. Thank you, Robbie. So now we'd like to discuss our findings about uh, recent recent crashes in the study air, area. We obtained crash data for a five-year period between 2017 and 2021. 37 total crashes were documented on I-40 and New Mexico 118 between milepost eight and milepost nine during this time frame. This slide shows a map with uh, crash locations within the study area. Here, red circle represents fatal crash, yellow circle represents injury crash, and blue circle represents property damage only crash. This figure shows the crash trend over the years. As you can see, year 2020 was the highest number of crashes among the five years while the year 2018 was the fewest crashes, the other three years were, were similar in the number of crashes. Out of the total 37 crashes that occurred in the project area during the, that period, there were nine injury crashes, one fatal crash, and the remaining 27 crashes were property damage. Okay. The majority of the crashes were collision with fixed objects, the other collisions included crashes with other vehicles, collisions with animals, and overturn rollover crashes. 51% of the crashes occurred during night nighttime, and 24 of the crashes occurred during winter conditions or snowy conditions. 
So now we'll switch to uh, the drainage discipline. Currently, most of the flow paths are directed under the roadway crossings using uh, corrugated metal culverts. The images on this slide illustrate that many of these culverts are corroded, uh, experiencing scour and accumulate, accumulating sediment. This slide displays other drainage structures currently facing sedimentation and structural issues. So here you can see the interchange's main flow path originating off-site, coming from the mesa to the northwest of the interchange and passing through a culvert under the railroad tracks towards our study area. It is estimated that the railroad culvert limits the flow towards the interchange to about 230 cubic feet per second. However, the, the culverts meant to convey this flow under I-40 may only have a capacity of 85 cubic feet per second before water starts backing up and flowing through the New Mexico 118 underpass, as indicated by the red arrows in the figure. Clearly, this uh, poses a significant issue and, and could potentially disrupt people driving on New Mexico 118. Okay, now I'd like to talk about the environmental discipline. Most of the land in the study area has been disturbed already due to, um, due to the roadways. However, the, the Parco River is located, um, located on the southern extent of the study area and flows parallel to I-40. Wildlife habitat is low quality due to numerous roadway facilities. We don't expect any potential for impacts to threatened or endangered species, and there's no critical habitat in or near the study area. There are previously documented uh, cultural resources in the study area. One of those is the historic Route 66. So let me summarize the uh, needs, the, the needs that our team have identified within the study area. One first is the aged, dilapidated, and deficient bridge structure. Uh, the poor stopping site distance on New Mexico 118 and the poor stopping and, and site distance for I-40 exit and entrance ramps. There's defi deficient deceleration distance for the interchange exit ramp ramps. And there's deficient acceleration and merge geometry for the interchange entrance ramps. There's undersized and deteriorating drainage structures. And there's the interchange layout is obsolete and does not meet driver expectations. It's important to note at this time in the discussion that these deficiencies are not a result of engineering negl negligence or mistakes, but rather the results of from the fact that everything was designed to the standard of the early 1960s and nothing has been updated since, since then. So the purpose of the study is to improve the safety and operations of the interchange and improve one eight, New Mexico 118 as a viable truck route for incident management on I-40. As previously mentioned, there's a larger study uh, going on on I-40 corridor, which includes our, this study area. And it is the New Mexico Department of Transportation's intention that the efforts from the, the larger study be uh, uh, included uh, into the efforts of this study. All right, so now that we've established those needs, let's talk about some proposed alternatives uh, to improve the study area. A no-build alternative is always considered in the development of a, uh, of a study. The no-build alternative means that no improvements or modifications would occur. The study team has developed four different alternatives to address and mitigate issues identified in the roadway drainage and bridge disciplines. The alternatives include, alternative number one is an enhancement, enhanced existing interchange. Alternative two is a diamond interchange with 
alternative 2A uh, is New Mexico 118 under I-40. And alternative 2B is New Mexico 118 over I-40. Alternative three is a tight diamond interchange with New Mexico 118 alignment straightened out. So here is alternative number one, and it's an enhancement to the existing interchange layout. So some considerations um, for this alternative is an improvement, um, improvement to the site distance on New Mexico 118. The alternative at will add or extend deceleration lanes for off ramps. The alternative will add or ex, uh, extend acceleration lane for on ramps. Um, the effects on cultural and natural resources would be low. There's no change to the posted speed for New Mexico 118. Uh, the closure of New Mexico 118 for roadway construction uh, is possible. Uh, it requires I-40 cross crossovers for detours during bridge construction, and then possible closures of ramps during construction. This alternative does not change the layout of the interchange, and so it, it really does not meet the driver expectation. There's a low potential for impacts to cultural resources and, and then minor modifications to, to Lupton Road. All right, so let's talk now about alternative number uh, two. And alternative 2A is a, uh, so this alternative changes the interchange configuration to a more modern layout, which is typically referred to as a diamond interchange. New Mexico 118 goes under I-40 in this alternative with round and, and has roundabouts at the proposed intersections of New Mexico 118, the ramps and Lupton Road. So here's some considerations to, to uh, take into account with this alternative. The diamond interchange is a more modern layout that meets driver expectations. Shifting the New Mexico 118 crossing to the north uh, from the existing location improves maintenance of traffic during construction. Uh, there's a potential to leave New Mexico 118 open during the construction. And then the construction, con, uh, the alternative constructs new ramps that provide adequate stopping distance, uh, new ramps, entrance ramps that provide adequate distance for the acceleration and merging into I-40 traffic. There would be no change in the, in the speed limit for New Mexico 118 here. Uh, the roundabouts would improve safety of the intersections. There would be some additional right-of-way that would be needed. We expect that this alternative will have a higher cost when compared to alternative number one. Um, expect also that during construction, there would be a closure of ramps. There's a higher potential uh, for impacts to the cultural resources with this alternative. And then the, the handling of the drainage flow um, is a little bit more challenging with this alternative because of the roundabout being right uh, centered on that uh, drainage flow path. Here again, there's uh, some work for Lupton Road to extend uh, that connection into the roundabout. All right, so alternative 2B is, is real similar geometry to, to 2A with exception that uh, New Mexico 118 goes over I-40 in this alternative. So again, the uh, things to think about here is that the diamond interchange is a more modern layout that meets driver expectations. Again, shifting New Mexico 118 uh, to the north uh, improves the traffic control during construction and would allow us to keep one eight, New Mexico 118 open during construction. Uh, the exit ramps would uh, provide adequate stopping distance, and then those entrance ramps also would give you adequate uh, distance for acceleration and merging into I-40 traffic. 
There's no change to uh, speeds for New Mexico 118. Here again, in this alternative, there would be some additional right away that would be needed. Um, one of the concerns uh, with this alternative is the staggered intersection layout uh, for the westbound off ramp and westbound on ramp um, because of the limited right of way and, and the restrictions of the railroad, we really didn't have the opportunity to align those intersections. Again, there's a potential for impacts to cultural resources with this alternative, and there's uh, the extension of Lupton Road to, to New Mexico 118 intersection. Okay, the last alternative that's been developed, again, is a, is a diamond interchange. We'll call this a tight diamond interchange. Uh, it's again is the configuration is a more modern layout which uh, um, is meets a driver expectation. Uh, here on New Mexico uh, on this alternative, New Mexico 118 goes over uh, I-40 and will remain at the posted speed limit of 55 miles per hour, like the the, the adjacent lengths uh, of New Mexico 118. Considerations for this alternative are that the diamond interchange is more modern uh, layout that meets driver expectations. Uh, the speed limit through the study area will be raised to the 55 mile per hour to match the uh, speed limit of the corridor. Improved site dis distance on New Mexico 118, we would uh, again reconstruct the exit ramps to provide stopping distance and, and the entrance ramps to provide the adequate distance for acceleration and merging. Again, there's some additional right-of-way that would be needed uh, with this alternative. Uh, again, we expect that this alternative would have a higher cost than alternative number one. Uh, the, the ramps during construction would uh, most likely be closed during construction. And uh, again, a higher potential of, of impacts to, to cultural resources. This alternative does uh, have some reconstruction of Lupton Road, um, requiring some modifications to, uh, to get the intersection into New Mexico 118. All right, so those are the alternatives that have been developed at this point. And so now let's talk about the next steps for the study. The, the build alternatives will be developed further and, and we'll go through a detailed evaluation process. We'll conduct another round of, of uh, public outreach this summer to present our findings uh, from the detailed evaluation. Once the preferred alternative has been identified, the study will be finalized and submitted to the Federal Highway Administration for their review. We anticipate completing the report in late summer, or early fall of this year. Uh, the selection alternative from the study will then be developed to a preliminary design level. The final design and construction schedule is uncertain at this point uh, because the budget for those items has not been programmed yet. There'll be more to come on, on that uh, part of the schedule. 